we've had some audio issues that we have not been able to solve. Our IT crew needs some sound lessons. <laughs> <In tech. laughs> but we've, we're going to have it figured out next time because we want to do a lot more of this. We have a special guest today. We got my friend Manny Carrasco on the line, and uh, we're super excited about that. Can you turn the sound down on that? The sound down on the. Uh... Yeah, because I'm getting, I'm hearing somebody get back on on speaker somewhere. But uh, anyway, I've got Manny, um, and but there's a couple of things I want to get to before we get to that. Uh, the biggest thing is uh, a week from tomorrow we are doing a big uh, live event uh, for six hours, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about animal drawing. And um, it's uh, we go on at 11 a.m. Eastern time, and uh, we're going to go until five o'clock in the evening, and we're just going to have a great time. I'm going to talk about comparative anatomy. We're going to talk about musculature, bone structure, we're going to talk about drawing animals when they're moving, we're going to talk about all kinds of cool stuff, and that's going to be next Saturday, October 10th, and uh, if you go over to creatureartteacher.com slash live, you can get more information on that. So we're really excited about that, it's going to be a lot of fun, you know, we, uh, we'd love to do these live events and bring people in, but obviously we can't do that nowadays with COVID happening and, uh, and so this is the next best thing and actually I like this a little better because we can include our friends from around the world that aren't otherwise able to come and be here with us live. So without further ado I want to talk to you guys about my friend Manny Carrasco. Is he up? There he is. Say hi Manny. What's up guys? It's good to be on here. I'm excited. It's fun. A little late but we're good. Yes. All good. So Manny and I have known each other for quite a few years. Uh, and, uh, and we've do, been doing a lot of traveling together. Uh, Nick and Manny and myself, we've had some adventures in Wyoming and uh, Yellowstone and all that kind of stuff. We've had some great times. And this, uh, this past October, well, actually, we're coming, it was a year ago, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was, it was a year, year ago. ago today, yeah, I I think. When did we leave? Uh, the 6th? I can't remember when we left. Anyway, it was, it was one year ago this week that we went to the Maasai Mara in Kenya. And, um, and we were there for um, quite a bit, and uh, for what, 10 days, 7 days, something like that? Yeah, something like that, 10 days, 12 days. Yeah, and we just, we had a really great adventure, and so I thought it would be kind of fun for us today to sit here and talk about Africa a little bit, and do some drawings from Africa, and, uh, and just shoot the breeze and see what you guys, yeah. you know, we, we'd be open for questions. Uh, we're actually trying to get another trip going to Africa, Manny and myself and Nick. And Dustin, hopefully on this one, and yeah. uh, and Vedanta and family and all kinds of stuff. So we've been we've been talking about doing that, and as soon as everything opens up, which I think it's starting to open up, and yeah. uh, so and also we're talking about doing some gorillas as well. But and uh, but anyway, why don't we jump over to the screen, and uh, we can start drawing, and you guys can start asking questions. And did you pull Manny's slide up? Uh, Let's pull Manny's slide up real quick, because I want you guys to be able to follow Manny as well. There you go. So here's Manny's information, and uh, and actually, you'll never find anybody. You won't find a better expert on birds of prey. I had to keep going. I had to keep going back to Manny to make sure I was doing my birds of prey course right. <laughs> Manny's an amazing falconer. Maybe you can talk a little bit about some of your adventures you've had while falconing. Falconing is that right? Being, being a falconer. Falconry. Oh, falconry. falconry, yeah, falconry. Uh, we call it ha <laughs> hawking, hawking, hawking. Oh, oh, uh oh, I'm losing them. There, we got you back. Yep. There we go. Want to make sure. We I've start got drawing everything. some animals, some animals. Oh, we're gonna take the uh, pause sinking. There we go. My uh, my Dropbox was uh, sinking. Yeah, let's draw some animals, and we can start. Okay, sounds good, man. Yeah. Sounds good. Because I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to start sketching a little secretary bird. I've got my, my Africa reference pulled up. Yep. And uh, I'm going to try oh, not to crowd you out this time like I did last time. Oh, no, no, it's good, man. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> this is always fun anyway. So tell us a little bit about your background, Manny, for those of us, for those of the, the audience that don't know who you are. Well, I'm self-trained. I've I, I always uh, been drawn my entire life. I... Uh, uh, didn't go to school to it, but I ended up teaching school. That was really strange. But um, it's all passion-fed, man, you know? Uh, not any different than anybody else. Uh, I did miss, I, you know, I always feel like I did miss some, some stuff as far as, like, uh, 
industrial design and things like that, but always been interested in wildlife. I grew up uh, in the West Texas area with a ranching family and um, always exposed to a lot of animals around the Big Bend area of uh, National Park in Texas. So got to learn a lot of stuff uh, on my own, experiencing animals, horses, and then uh, in the uh, fourth grade, third grade, I ended up uh, reading My Side of the Mountain. And uh, it's a book about a kid who traps a peregrine falcon and ends up training it to hunt. And ever since then, I've been uh, interested in birds of prey and falconry and ended up doing it and been doing it for a very long time now. Uh, mostly with red-tailed hawks. I've had experiences with all kinds of birds, uh, because of a raptor center that I ended up volunteering at when I was learning about it. one of my mentors that ran a facility in um, San Antonio called Last Chance Forever. And there, um, got to handle a lot of birds like Indian condors, uh, wow. Russian eagles, uh, it, it, you know, every, every bird of the world I learned there, but uh, I, all the native stuff, of course, is the stuff that I use for falconry which is hunting with a bird of prey. A lot of people think that they go to like a Renaissance festival and see somebody flying a, a bird back and forth in, uh, in an audience and, and they think that's falconry, or they'll call it falconry, but that's just using falconry techniques to, uh, to do an exhibition with birds of prey. But uh, falconry is actually taking wild game and actually hunting with a bird. So uh, that's where all my experience came from. And I've done even falconry in... Uh, Africa as well. So it's taken me all over the world. I was going to say, didn't you go to Mongolia? You've been to Mongolia, the Middle East? All well, I went to, uh, I went to the international, um, to the international uh, falconry festival, which everybody from around the world got uh, to attend. Uh, it was held in, I've been to several of them around the world. Uh, the most memorable ones are probably in uh, Abu Dhabi, in Dubai. Yeah, and I've gotten to meet falconers from every walk of life, man. And uh, some of my best friends are uh, Mo Mongols and Kazakhstan's. All the they call them Kazakhs. Uh, uh, we fly golden eagles, and I've gotten to see every kind of bird of prey be flown. So, man, that's super know. cool. Yeah, it is, and it, it, it's really strange. It's a, it's a. Uh, just the way we draw, Aaron, and the way we, uh, how we love to do that. Uh, falconry in a weird way is very much like, it is an art form. Uh, a lot of, it's not, it, there's a lot of people that have birds of prey and they're licensed for falconry, but yeah, the, di the difference is, is the guys that hunt the birds and actually uh, catch game with them. And uh, my last red tail that I had, uh, Dakota, uh, which you met, um, she was a machine, man. That bird caught. Dustin met her too, yeah. Remember the Dakota Dustin? I believe so. Trapping yeah, the eagle. that he had when we were there. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I don't think. I don't think so. Oh, maybe he wasn't there. Maybe it no. was. Maybe that was one. Of but, the oh other. no! You know that was the, that was the first time. Uh, that was Peter Hahn and. Uh, uh, Jaw was there, right? Yeah, Jaw Cooper, uh, Allison. And, uh, oh, Christine. you're right. That was the first one. You're right. Yeah, Mom, yeah that yeah, was our first. That was our first uh, deal. Yeah, so, my first uh, trip was last year. Was it March? What was it March or yeah. no? It was like. Well, I remember there, there was the one evening we we, we pulled the, the bird out in the evening and to, to feed her. Yeah, to feed her. Yeah, that's when I had I had her with me. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I thought Dustin was there for that. Maybe that was nope. Peter. No, it was it was it was you and Peter filming. Her oh, eating. that's what it was. You're right. I'm yeah, you know, Peter and I look so alike. I'm confusing <laughs> Dustin with Peter. Yeah. We look yeah, so I alike. Yeah. Peter with Dustin too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so falconry's taken me all over the world as as well as my art. You know, I've been really lucky to have been able to blend both. I've, I've, there for a, for a long time, I was doing a lot of uh, paintings and bird of prey art for uh, for falconry clubs and the North yeah. American Falconers Association and things like that. So that ended ended up getting invited me to uh, to meet all the international falconers that I know. So 
and it, it, it's a internationally uh, practiced sport. So yeah, yeah, but, super uh, cool. yeah. it was cool. Uh, we were we were hunting we were hunting Franklin in uh, Zimbabwe with, the, with some falcons up there. That was fun. So it was neat to see falconry in, in Africa. Yeah. You have, you have a question? Yes. Oh, yeah, I got a couple of questions. Um, on the gray toned paper, uh, how do you uh, tape the edges off without tearing the paper? I don't, I don't tape the edges off. On the gray I think tone? I know what they're, what they're asking. The um, so uh, it's so funny because I just saw, a, I don't know if it was Jock Cooper that just did a, a demo or somebody was doing a demo on taping uh, the edges. The thing is, is you got you got to make sure you get uh, artist tape or, or uh, yeah, you know the masking tape. Uh, sometimes if yeah. it sticks too long and you tear it up, I think it's like you know the way you do your edges, Aaron, when you tape a border around your watercolor. Yeah, I always use artist tape. Never use masking tape; it'll just destroy yeah, because everything. that will rip everything up to shreds, even if you pull it. And even the artist tape, you have to be sort of careful, right? Well, you can't leave it on too long. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do when it does stay too long? Do you do the blow dryer trick? Oh, no, I've never done that. Yeah, so what I do is when it does stay too long and it gets too sticky, I use a blow dryer to kind of reheat it up. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll, get to loose, it'll get it to loosen up. Oh, cool. Yeah. And also Austin says, hey, Dad. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, such a, uh, it was such a dream for me to, uh, to be with like-minded people in Africa. Um, what a, what a great experiences, Aaron. It's so funny that we've, uh, you know, we've experienced what we have in, in in the little time. Well, I mean, we've known each other for a bit, but I mean, I, I feel like we've done quite a bit. Yeah, and I have. think it's just because our uh, our uh, get the same spirit, kind of, you know. And, yeah, uh, same spirit, man. You know, I, and uh, I, it, I, it's just like nonstop for me, man. And I'm so glad that um, that you know we didn't get to do it this year. Now, I've already been to Yellowstone a couple of times um, uh, since COVID. Just kind of, if not just Yellowstone, but around uh, uh, Jackson and, and into Yellowstone. But uh, it's just fun to be able to to, to share to share those passions together, right? It's it, it brings something else to uh, to having company when you're drawing. It really does. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, when, uh, uh, you know, one blade sharpens another. Yeah, and going back to Africa, you know the, you know there's so many people in our audience that have never gone that want to go, and um, and a lot of people ask me what it's like, and the only way I can describe it, and to me it's almost like a genetic memory, like we have oh, yeah. a genetic memory, and yep. every time I go, including the first time I went, the first time I went, I got off that plane, out on the out in the the savannah there in the Maasai Mara, I stepped off the plane onto that dirt runway and I instantly uh, felt like I came home. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Like you yep. just like, it's a, there's a familiarity that, that permeates it, that you just feel like you've been there before. It just, everything about it feels familiar. And even, uh, it, it's funny you say that because, you know, we go to Yellowstone and we go to other places, right? And, uh, uh, I don't get that same primal, weird feeling that I do from Africa. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, you, you get this feeling of, oh, this is wonderful being out in the in the wilds, but it's not the same, like you said, yeah, it's not the same as, as what you get in Africa. I would love to go. <laughs> we will go. Oh, man, I, I, it, 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 sometimes I even, uh, it's weird, man, I get so emotional out there. It's just, it's just insane. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Uh, would you ever consider letting us, uh, letting any of us join you in uh, painting on Magma, uh, on the Magma Studio? Oh, that's a cool yeah. idea. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> you realize how many hearts you broke just now? <laughs> no, I think that's a cool idea. Yeah, well, that'd be fun to do sometime. I think. How many can you, How many can you get up to on this? I think. Uh, yeah, when we did it at Lightbox, we had probably, I want to say, like 12 people, maybe. Oh, that's cool. Give, yeah, or, think, give or take. You know? Yeah, you can put a lot of people on there, if I recall. I can't remember exactly how many, but it's a lot. It's way up there. But um, I think this, mess, this uh, question goes to both of you. It's from uh, Luke from, uh, from
from the workshop in uh, Manchester. Oh, cool. He's asking, uh, what is an animal that you would love to see that you haven't seen in the wild? Oh, I already got I already got my answer for that. Go for it, because I, I got to think about um, it. Uh, snow leopards. Uh, uh, in the wild. Yeah, you're, that's a good one. The ghost cat. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I, you know, we see them in the zoo, you see them everywhere else, but there's there's a there's a there's a huge difference when you see an animal in its in its in its uh, home. So uh, I have a friend that is a filmmaker in uh, India, and uh, he's uh, he's been antsy for me to get out there. Uh, if you guys have Disney Plus, uh, including Yaren, uh, check it out. Uh, Wild Cats of India, uh, Sandesh Kapoor is his name, and he just uh, he did a a really amazing. Uh, little film on uh on wild cats of india but uh, oh, wow. for me it's it's the snow, it's definitely the snow leopard yeah and 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 uh, gorillas as well I'm John, you just beat people. me to it that was going to be my next one <laughs> yeah but uh it, i think um to be honest if, if if i had to choose between the both i think i'd end up going to the snow leopard because i'm intrigued with the um just the culture of like around that area in nepal tibet you know yeah so well, years ago, I was in uh, southern Nepal, right on the border of northern India, at a, in a park called Chitwan National Park. And uh, we went out every day looking for, uh, uh, we went out on elephant back every day. And oh, it was yeah. really cool. And we were looking for uh, uh, Indian rhinos and um, tigers. We saw a yeah. lot of tiger sign, but uh, we never found, I saw, saw a lot of tiger sign, but we never saw any tigers. And um, I would absolutely love to find a tiger in the wild. Yeah, that's the that's the other thing that Sandesh is really good at. He's been filming uh, tigers in, in those areas, and he knows them really well. So uh, uh, COVID really put a hamper on all that. But yeah. you know, hopefully things will get back to normal at some point. So. Uh, do you do any trips to Africa for learning artists? I would love to go and learn. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, we're we're starting to this this first trip uh, with uh, with the group that we went was sort of a a, a testing ground. Uh, that was my second time to that particular place um, in the Masai Mara, and the first time I went, it was sort of like trying to see what it would be like to bring other people. And immediately when I got there, I knew that I could that this was the place to do it at. Yeah, and. Uh, but um, uh, we, we do have plans, hopefully soon, uh, to, to bring people out there. I mean, I think uh, it would be capped off at a certain number. But uh, yes, I mean, we had, uh, I believe, uh, one, of, one of our Kickstarter, uh, what do you call it? One of our Kickstarter prizes was uh, uh, an, you know, to go to Africa with us. And, and I believe one of the gentlemen that was there with us uh, was that person, if I'm right. Well, we um, and we've talked about doing the the camp and draw here in North America yep. as well. Yep, exactly. Which I is, think that's that, I think that's a great place to start, right? Like do yeah. it here, like in Jackson, Yellowstone, maybe Moab, you know, some areas like that where we all get together and just draw. And yeah, that, and, so and that's for, what's yeah. So let's explain there. that for the folks that aren't familiar with it, because I don't think anyone else is familiar with what we're talking about. What was that again, Aaron? I was going to say, we can exp why don't you explain that, because it's through Expedition Art, right? Yeah, it's through Expedition Art. Expedition Art is a group that um, was uh, established to use art for education and conservation, uh, expeditionart.org. And uh, we have a, a group, a, a really nice um, group of artists that, that are all together, and, uh, including Aaron, myself, David Levy, Christy, Tipton, uh, Peter Hahn, uh, Tara Whitlatch, uh, all animal uh, inspired artists. So uh, uh, through that trip, we, we've done several different fundraisers using art. And uh, one of them was uh, a book that we put together called Endangered that's available still if you guys haven't got it in, uh, through uh, our website. And uh, actually that is for, um, Sumatra conservation. We bought a plot of land using uh, some of the money that we got from that book, uh, which is for some quarters for rhinos and uh, apes. But um, 
we uh, um, use art to educate. Hey, Manny, how is the humidity in Texas compared to Florida? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm not in Texas right now. I'm in Salt Lake uh, City, but uh, the humidity in Texas, com uh, no, it doesn't compare to you guys. No. Well, yeah, you're, yeah, well, uh, yeah, because this, I was going to say, Austin, Austin gets pretty humid, though. I mean, it's, oh, it gets really humid. It's not like Houston. It's not West Texas, yeah. Yeah, no, no that's where I grew up, is I grew up in West Texas, uh, and that's uh, different. That's yeah. way different. I would put up with that place anytime. Uh, <laughs> humidity in Austin and Houston and getting closer to Louisiana, those places are uh, not my favorite. Uh, my brother is a farrier. He uh, shoot, shots horses and uh, he curses that humidity every day when he goes to work. <laughs> so. Can you demonstrate how people hinge the jaws wrong when uh, drawing mouths open? You explain it as a guillotine, but I've never seen you demonstrate the wrong way to do it. You're talking to me or Manny? Probably you, because I've never explained it as a guillotine. Well, my thing is, you know, when you're drawing a, a mouth, let me turn off my layers real quick. Let me turn these off. Boop, 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 boop. There. When you're drawing, uh, let's say we have a cat, okay? I got, to, I got to create a new layer. So let's say we have a cat. We're looking at that cat from in profile. Okay, and we got the nose coming down. There's the nostril. Draw this really quick. Okay, we got the. So we got this, okay? Here's the corner of the mouth. But a lot, and we'll draw this over here. There. Okay, so here's the corner of the mouth. And I want to see if I can adjust. Can I adjust the, uh, the opacity on the layer? Uh, yes, you can. Where do I do that? Uh, up at the top, Aaron, if you go, you go up to where it says, okay, go all the way to the top of the layers. Yeah. The very first one. The very first one. Oh, that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like. Oh, there we go. Slide. Perfect. Okay. There you go. There you go. Gotcha. 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 Okay. So we've got that. Now, what a lot of people will do um, as a mistake is they'll use the nose and everything. They'll open the mouth like this, like that. Especially in animation, they'll open that mouth up like that which is completely wrong. You're, the hinge of the mouth is not right here. It's not at the corner of the mouth. The hinge, right here, here's a, here's a cat skull. Matter of fact, here's a lion skull. Where's that hinge? That hinge is way in the back behind the, right under the ear, behind those cheeks, right there. And so that's what you want to remember. So, rather than hinging it here, like this, think of that hinge being back here, right there. So now when the mouth opens, you bring that mouth way down here, and you get something that looks like that, and they can open way even further than that. You get something that looks like that. Oh, connection issues, waiting for, oh, there we go. Okay, so, and you can open it up even more than that. Like just having this go way down. Like so. Your internet connection is unstable. Is everything happening okay on your end? Yeah, everything's good over here. Okay, it's just saying I'm, I'm getting a internet unstable connection warning. So that's how you hinge that jaw. Let me uh, turn these back on. I want to get back to drawing these guys. Here we go. Are there any animals that you would consider underrated or underappreciated? I don't know. I mean, I, I think all. I don't know. That's a hard. That's a hard question. Uh, I mean, I think people. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, 
anthropomorphize animals and like the one I'm, like a hyena that I'm drawing now. They're not. Uh, yeah. They're not, they see they're them not as the evil. most favorite animals in the world. I find them intriguing, but uh, I get you know. But at the same time, you can see why people would consider them. You know, like I guess it's all look and appearance, right? So, yeah, and this the way they kind of come in and <laughs> and yeah. and rack and rack havoc. Yeah. yeah. We had that hyena that messed up that entire cheetah hunt for us. Yeah, exactly. So I was I was mad at hyenas there for a little bit. <laughs> well, we we got we had remember that we had the dogs there. The dogs, the camp dogs, were awesome. These yeah. dogs were they're just medium sized dogs. Yeah. They um, you know, the hyenas would come close to our camp, and those dogs would hear it, and man, they were gone. <laughs> they're going after the hyenas or the. Or the baboons, if the baboons got too close, but then remember, how, uh, but if the, but if the lions cool. came within too close yep. to the camp, then you you'd see the dogs they'd run out, and then you'd hear, Oof. Oof. yeah, they yeah, they have different. <laughs> <more. laughs> like, Screw that, I'm not getting too close. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, the the bark changes. It's like uh, <laughs> that's where you're like, all right, let's get inside. <laughs> you know, they had a uh, a warthog there. Years ago, I don't know if you, if you knew about that, Aaron. No. Uh, Mariola raised a piglet, and uh, uh, it, it used to hang around there with you know with oh, everybody. That's cool. But uh, but the lions ate him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess you know if you're gonna live there, then circle of life. Yeah, circle of life. Yeah. Poor Pumba. Uh, here we go. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm missing some of the. Uh, I'm missing some of the comments on my end because I'm doing a couple different things here. Twitch comment, I just started the Bird of Prey lessons and I love the red, uh, red-tailed red hawk. Now it's my favorite bird. Right on. Yeah. The stream is good. YouTube comment, I love your bird course. It's so good that I can use it for science and art. I'm homeschooled and in the sixth grade. Oh, that's awesome. And it's more detailed than my science books. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know you're doing oh, good right. when you're doing better work than the than the books themselves for yeah, school. Exactly. <laughs> I've been working with red tail hawks over thirty years now. That's my that's my choice bird to fly. Wow. And uh, this uh, next question goes for you, Manny. Um, can you talk a little about your artistic journey? Like, when did you start drawing? When uh, were your parents uh, also drawing? Uh, what encouraged you to work on your artwork? Well, um, I've drawn all my life. The, my grandmother, before she passed away, she gave me uh, the earliest drawing that exists that I did. And it's, uh, she labeled, you know, she wrote there. It was a little bitty address book that she handed to me, and I drew a little profile of a character and then a house. Um, and I was a, a year and 10 months old. Wow. Um, which is pretty crazy. And I. I I, I have that, uh, but uh, Bugs Bunny, Popeye, uh, that was my beginning. Uh, I just was um, enamored at watching all that, you know, all the drawings come to life. So when I would ask for uh, coloring books as a kid, it wasn't to color them, it was to learn how to copy those drawings. Yeah. So uh, by the time I went into kindergarten, I could draw the entire staff of Popeye, uh, awesome. uh, or you know, like olive oil and Bluto and all those. But um, um, I went from that to comic books. Uh, I loved comic books. I, I think they were my teacher. Uh, comic books to animation. I ended up uh, um, right out of high school. I ended up uh, lucky enough to go and assist a man named uh, Scott Shaw, who was working on some Flintstone stuff, and that kind of started my direction into animation. And uh, went from that to and you know traditional animation. Oh, I never worked at Disney. I didn't work on any Disney feature. Um, the closest I came to was like man, I was pretty young, and they wanted me uh, to stay in LA. I moved to LA from from Texas, by the way, and I worked on uh, Prince of Egypt and Anastasia. Um, Right trying to space jam, but I went from that to I've always drawn animals. I've always been uh, enamored with animals because of my upbringing. Like I said, 
growing up in a ranch and around animals and, and birds of prey and everything. So uh, following artists like Bob Kuhn, uh, Carl Rung Rungus, uh, shows like Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom really uh, steered me toward animals. I wanted to be a veterinarian or, or a wildlife biologist. And um, I still, to a sense, do some of that work because of passion. Like I get to go out with friends that are actually wildlife biologists and, and, and help them with cougar work. And uh, I've been to Africa. My first times to Africa weren't to go draw. They were for actual work. We were dehorning rhinos in, in Zimbabwe. So, uh, for anti-poaching, I've done some uh, helped with snare removals and veterinarians in uh, in Zim, uh, wildlife captures. Uh, so I've been really involved as far as wildlife goes. So I uh, <clears throat> went from traditional animation into video games. I was a concept artist um, at a place called The Claim. Uh, I'm kind of going through the quick cliff notes of my of what, what comes to my head yeah. um, when uh, we uh, worked at a claim for a lot of a lot of titles in uh, Turok and be jam red star all kinds of different titles Jinx, Bex, I'm sorry and uh, uh, worked at uh, Zynga for a little bit people that do Farmville and all that and then I went uh, we formed a concept art studio called Steambot myself and uh, David Levy Christy and Cherry, uh, we worked on a lot of uh, movies through Steambot. And then at some point when that group finally disbanded that studio, uh, I uh, got the idea to start uh, doing a blog on outdoors and kind of getting outdoors because I was sort of really burned out from working in, uh, in offices and inside all the time. So I started a little blog and that blog uh, in talking to David turned into Expedition Art. And, uh, and it sort of uh, went from there. That's cool. We got another one here. Uh, let me see. Uh, YouTube question. I love Manu's drawings of UFC fighters. Is Aaron a fan of the sport as well? I am kind of a fan. Traditional boxing better? UFC is a, UFC is a little brutal for me. But I love, I love you know, the... Uh, Personally, I love the uh, the sport of boxing and getting in the ring and all that. Yeah, I uh, so I'm associated with that because uh, I've been doing jujitsu for years, Brazilian jujitsu, Gracie jujitsu, and they started the first UFC. And uh, through that, it's kind of led me to being friends with uh, uh, fighters above the UFC, uh, Ronda Rousey, uh, Cub Swanson. Israel Adesanya, mm -hmm. who's the current champ. Uh, my artwork as well has kind of put me there. Uh, I've done some, uh, Dana White has bought a lot of my sketchbooks and a lot of the fighters that I've done. And, uh, I, you know, I'm, I, I have some. Ah, he's cutting out. See, kind of grew up doing that kind of stuff. Okay. So. Thank you for liking my artwork and the, U the UFC stuff. I. I uh, love doing those when they when they do face offs. I kind of like sketching really quick and doing those. Just it, it's a it's a little different than anything else. So. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The stuff you do, that thing that you do. <laughs> and a question for you, Dad. Uh, this is back from when you were showing your uh, the lion skull. Uh, where do you? Uh, take your skulls from are those replicas or maybe real ones they are most of my skulls are replicas I do have a few real ones and usually my real ones I pick up in taxidermy shops here and there uh, the pays hundred bucks for them yeah that's right <laughs> hundred bucks the draft skull yeah. that you see behind me I picked up at a taxidermy shop in uh, in uh, Austin Texas of all places um, yeah but uh, no I get most of my uh, skulls from bone clones which is a uh, reproduction house that makes a lot of different skulls and so um, and it's nice because the, the reproductions are really great quality and you're not having to uh, have an animal killed in order to fulfill it and they're pretty affordable too that's it's kind of nice yeah. and they you know they're super affordable 
Hi, Aaron. Manny. Hey, what's, what's going on? What are your thoughts uh, for the future of the Animal Kingdom? Do you have hope, or are you worried for the future? Uh, you want to go first, Aaron, or you want me to go? Go for it. Okay. Um, I worry a lot. Um, that's why I formed uh, or helped form uh, Expedition Art. I think that we can make a difference. I think being artists, uh, we have a, 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 an amazing superpower to be able to produce things that communicate visually. Uh, I don't like to sit and argue with people too much about what what uh, what, what is wrong or right. You know, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Uh, uh, I grew up hunting a deer and everything, but it wasn't uh, trophy hunting per se. Everything was in the ranch where we where we uh, grew up. Everything's consumed. And but um, I have hope. I, I think people uh, deep down inside have a, 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 a good nature. And, and I'm always hoping that that will prevail and, and, and know what's right and wrong. Um, I've changed people's minds with, uh, with just artwork. So uh, I think education is key. I think that's our biggest weapon uh, as conservationists, you know. So... Uh, it's very easy to uh, to lose track of that. Uh, I do feel sad, and and I see problems that occur uh, within the the communities of the Maasai, with the you know, communities in Yellowstone, with the wolves. And, uh, it's kind of a give or take. I like uh, to listen to biologists and what they have to say. Uh, it, 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 I, I see the frustrations of of people uh, losing livestock to wolves and and I understand where they're coming from so it's a matter of how to how to balance that system you know yeah um, so. I think your phone was just ringing we heard the vibration here on this end <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I totally agree and um, I do worry about as far as different administrations coming in and you know, like the current yes. administration here kind of peel, uh, repealing a lot of the environmental protection laws that have happened over the last several years and bringing it back to square one again. Yeah, that, uh, that, those that, are the that, things that, that, you know, I worry about development in environmentally sensitive areas. Um, you know, I don't think we should be drilling in the Alaska range or anything like that. I think there's, yeah. you know, so, I mean, there's, there's plenty of issues to, to, talk about there I guess but uh my I just I think there's a lot of awareness out there now obviously and it's just a matter of continuing forward I think the new generation coming in to the world now is a lot more environmentally sensitive than we were when we were kids growing up oh, yeah. in, growing up in the 70s yeah. and um yeah so I mean I I, I I have hope in that in that way, because I do think the new generation is more sensitive to what's going on in the world. Erin, what was your uh, what was your favorite animal that, or, or experience? I know that's kind of uh, when we went to the Maras last time. What stands out for you uh, in your head over everything else? Oh, on our last trip, it was the. Uh, seeing in the, when we're in the wild seeing the the warthog uh okay. getting, getting <laughs> taken down it was brutal hard to watch but it's i mean it's pure nature right in front of you and then you know doing when we go out at night with the lions that that just blew my mind oh yeah that's yeah um, incredible you know so uh but i just uh you know i this is my third trip to africa on this last one that we did, and I, you know, I'd seen a, uh, I saw a cheetah take down a young impala, but it was, you know, kind of from the distance, and so being able to see the lions as a, as a pride take down the, the warthog and uh, be right there and, you know, and see that drama, and watch, yeah. you know, watch the parents, how they encourage the, the young to yeah. finish it off and learn, and you can see the teaching happening right there. Yeah, that was pretty incredible. Yeah, it's pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, you know, I've always told people if I had a wish to grant everybody 
uh, it would be to, for, for, you know, especially artists, but for every day to, for everyone to at least once see Africa. Yeah. Just. I completely agree. A uh, question for Manny. Uh, have you ever done paleo art or drawn any prehistoric animals? Uh, yes, I have, and uh, uh, I used that was I did it for a long time. I uh, I wanted I wanted to be a paleontologist, um, and I have amazing paleontologist friends. Uh, dinosaurs were big for me when growing up, especially around high school. I was just intrigued, and then. Uh, um, seeing all the different paleo artists you know, do the stuff. I was very, uh, I'm not as, Terrell is amazing to me, Terrell Whitlatch. Uh, oh, I know. For those of you that don't know Terrell Whitlatch, she's just an amazing uh, creature designer, animal artist, degree in bio, uh, uh, biology, right? Yeah, you know, she, I think if I, if I remember right, this is, this is why I bring her up. Her, uh, her degree is in, Paleontological zoology, I believe. Oh wow! If, that, if that's even a word, but something like that, like that's you know. So uh, yes, I I, I love uh, drawing dinosaurs, and I was I did that for a very long time. Uh, so yeah, yes, I, I have done it. I should do it more often again because I forget how much fun they are. But um, I, maybe I should stream some at some point. Yeah, you should. That would be awesome. Have either of you met David Attenborough? No, man, that would be awesome for me. Another, uh, another, and I think I showed you when you visited me in Park City. Uh, remember that Russian illustrator, Vadim Gorbachev? Yes. That I showed you his his book. Yeah, that guy was that guy's work as a young kid. It just impressed me so much. Oh yeah. And it was neat to show Terrell uh, that because she had never heard. Well, he's you know he's in very he's in Russia, but if you do a search on him, uh, and I know him through falconry, so amazing other animal artists. I'm just thinking of animal artists that have been uh, yeah an impression on me. So Greg Beecham, uh, oh, of Greg. Uh, <laughs> I well, went to uh, an art show in Beecham, look him up. Jackson specifically to meet him. Yeah, look up Greg Beecham for those of you that don't know him. Yeah, well, that guy's like a living master. That guy. He went to and Africa. Taking him to uh, what's that? To Africa it was amazing. I'm so happy. It made my made my time. My dad and him really hit it off, and uh, he was really tickled that I got to go uh, and to, to be with Greg at, at, at a place like that, including yourself, Aaron. I mean, I've always. As a kid, I've always pictured, you know, myself like those old Guy Kaholiak pictures in his books where all oh, these yeah. people were growing in Africa. And I thought, man, I hope one day I do that. And that was such a dream for me to, for that to occur. Well, I've known Greg since I was in college, not known of his work. And so for yeah. for me to be able to meet Greg and, and hang out with him and, you know, have some whiskey, sit around the fire after a night of game driving in Africa, that's... That's pretty darn cool. Yeah, it is, man. He's such a such a nice guy. So he just got back from uh, a place called the Triple D Ranch, which is an animal uh, kind of like where we go to in in, in Bozeman. And I was okay. just about to ask Greg when was the next time he was going to go up there, and he just got back. Uh, so I, next time, you missed it. yeah, Aaron, they do have a uh, a snow leopard there. Wow. Uh, I'm planning on doing a trip in the this winter to go photograph a snow leopard. So I'll let's touch bases. Sounds good to me. Hey Manny, what's the best uh, art advice you ever got? Uh, so one of my most special people in my life is my uncle Sergio Aragones, um, Mad Magazine uh, cartoonist. Um, he instilled in me at a very young age about um, researching. So uh, even though his stuff is very cartoony, when you see his his stuff, when he when he draws a pirate ship, the pirate ship works. 
Even though it's a cartoon, it works. So he instilled in me research, always researching and making sure you do things right because the biggest example he gave me that I remember was he was saying, if I do some quick Mad Magazine, quick gags on, on uh, scuba divers, I gotta make sure that all my scuba diving gear, even though it's a cartoon, that it sort of makes sense. Yeah. Because maybe a, a, a scuba diver is gonna pick up that issue of Mad Magazine and then look at those and say, oh, that's wrong. Um, uh, I'm, I'm like that with, uh, with falconry and, and with animals that I know a lot of, you know, you, 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 things that you're very familiar with, um, you pick up on. So research was very important. So that was some of the best advice that I've ever gotten is to always research. And, and research has been um, like the trip to, to Africa with Aaron and with Peter Hahn and everybody, it's, it's, a, it's a reference trip. Uh, when we're in, uh, in, in Yellowstone, we're having an amazing time, but we are uh, researching and taking photographs. And, 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 and people say, uh, I don't know if you get this, if you get this asked a lot, Aaron, but like they say, do you, do you draw? You know, we do a lot of drawing there with, with, with the bison and stuff, but we usually do that after we get our reference photos. Does that make sense, right? Yeah. You mean, you know, we're there to see, to, to, you know, we're not going to sit there and draw that grizzly unless that grizzly sits there for a while. Exactly. And we've got all the pictures that we wanted. But yeah, that, that's, I would say that's probably the, some of the best advice Dustin is, uh, uh, that I that he he instilled in me uh, to to research things. So it's good advice. Very good advice. Manny, I live not far from Park City. Uh, were you visiting there, or is that a vacation home? I, I live in Park City. Um, I'm, I'm, I uh, moved down to. Uh, the Mill Creek area in, in Salt Lake now, but um, I was there in Park City for a while, and uh, I was in two. I was in a giant house. <laughs> if you remember that, I era. remember that. And yeah. I was alone. <laughs> that place so, was awesome. Uh, I do. I do miss it. I miss all. You remember all the, all of the uh, elk. Yeah, all the, all the elk. I sat right on your back porch and drew yeah. the elk walking through the yard. Yeah, they would. They would come in and. Uh, uh, sit down and I'd have like 50 elk in my backyard just looking, I, I'd look outside the window and they'd be there, so I miss that. Uh, I just, uh, I work for a, a clothing company here in, in Salt Lake um, called Cool, K-U-H-L, and it, the, it just, it, going up and down the canyon every day just got, got a little, uh, uh, in, during the winter, it's a lot. Like, oh, yeah. so I just decided to come down this way. See what this looks like with a dark background. You know, Mel lives here, uh, and we saw him at that thing that we did, uh, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, Mel Milton. He found on guy. And I love that guy, and I need to see him more often. Yeah, you know, you do. We haven't seen each other since. I know, I, you know, we all get busy, and you know how artists are. We need a next time we head up to uh, Yellowstone or something, we need to drag him with us. Well, he's another one we should give a shout out to. For those of you that don't know Mel Milton, look him up. The man can draw like nobody's business. Yeah, he's amazing. He's, he's such he's such an incredible artist, and he's and he's a wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah. There's nothing worse than, I mean, for me at least, uh, when I meet uh, an artist that I look up to, and it's not the person that, <laughs> that I thought it was. Yeah. Um, Mel's a, a great, great guy. Easy to talk to. He really is. Nice work on. Nice work hog on ya. Work hog. What layer is that? Oh, it's that layer. I mean, what layer is this? What's that layer? Okay. Manny, have you falcon hunted fish? What was the, your biggest catch if you did? Oh my god, okay. You can uh, falcon hunt well, fish? She did land on a fish that was dead in a creek one time, but she no, she doesn't she doesn't go after fish. Red tails are uh, I hunted like ninety nine percent of, of it. I was living in Austin and Ninety-nine percent of my uh, my quarry was um, squirrels. Squirrels with a red-tailed hawk, and uh, the biggest. Oh man, the big, um, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest. Uh, she pulled. Uh, she grabbed. 
what, the one that comes to my mind is grabbing the raccoon that was sleeping in a tree one time. Uh, she went after a squirrel and then hit the hole at the same time as the squirrel and came out with a giant raccoon. And that was kind of a mess, and, and, and that thing was huge. Um, oh, a feral hog. Uh, that's happened as well. But, uh, you know, they're not how you think they are. They're pretty smart animals, so... Uh, um, you know, she's not going to go after something that's bigger than her, but uh, I think uh, a, a great blue heron one time. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, she's kamikaze. Uh, I've caught pheasant, I've caught ducks, I've caught squirrels, uh, feral cats. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, all, it, it, it's an adventure. I could write a book on all the craziness and how I almost died flying a hawk. Well, tell the story about being up in the tree. <laughs> oh, with the moose? Yeah. Oh, and how long you had to be there and all that. Yeah, that I stayed there over, I, pretty much overnight. I, uh, I'll i try to make it quick. I went uh, I went on a hike here in the Uintas, where I took here. And remember before we left up to uh, Jackson? Yeah. We went up to all those creeks and all that beauty up there. Uh, I saw some beautiful rocks that I wanted to get close to, headed toward them, and uh, on my walk there, I had a moose tree me, tree me up, and she attacked me, which uh, I think, they don't, at- I, I, I'm pretty sure she had a baby with her, but um, she came after me, and I bear sprayed her, <laughs> and uh, I ended up going up a tree. We ac- actually ended up spraying, her. I sprayed myself too, I didn't mean to, the wind kind of kicked it back on me, but I ended up... Uh, <laughs> Going up in a tree, uh, I climbed up really quick and uh, shredded myself up pretty well. And then it got dark on me. And as I was getting dark, she stayed around and I was debating when to leave. And she was making such a fuss from the uh, spring that I gave her that it attracted a, a black bear. And the black bear came over to see what was going on. And all this whole time, I'm up in a tree. And uh, we ended up, uh, uh, she ended up. Sp- beating the bear away, and uh, wow, the, 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 it, she, the, the moon stayed closed, so I ended up, uh, it got dark on me, my flashlight went out, um, I had a flashlight on my keychain, that's the only flashlight that I had, and yeah. then uh, uh, that went out, uh, when I, I, I got lost trying to find my way back, because I, I crossed a, a creek, I, I crossed over a fallen log, and I couldn't find the log. I never found the log. I crossed the uh, the area. Um, I just picked a spot, and, and there was a fallen tree that I selected to go across, and I went across, and when it was all said and done, I, and then I couldn't find my car. My truck. <laughs> Dude, where's my car? Where's your car, dude? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, was, it was crazy. Yeah, but I, I got back home. The, I left about... Five o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon. I got, I was out there for about twelve hours. Wow! I got back. Uh, <laughs> I think I finally got back in cell reception like three in the morning, four in the morning. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. So that's brutal. That wasn't hunting with a hawk, though. That was just me uh, exploring. So I need to take you exploring with me, Aaron. Yes. Got another <laughs> question. YouTube question. Are you guys participating in Inktober? Well, so far I am. I've got one done. Um, I always say I am, and then I don't, but I, I sort of do every day anyway. That makes sense. I've never followed the, a, uh, the little list that they make, that Jake Parker makes. But, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the prompts. Yeah, I never, you know, I just kind of do my own thing, and I probably should. Uh, I saw, uh, actually, Aaron inspired me. I saw that he did it. Uh, I saw it last night, and uh, I was like, dang it, he's going to do it. And it's sort of... But see, that's what's cool about like when I, a uh, a sword, you know, iron sharpens iron or whatever. Uh, oh, we lost him there for a uh, second. Whether, whether he knows it or not, and I do it from like Ian McKegg, I do it from Terrell, I do it from all my friends, but like those kinds of inspiration, you know, I see something that he does, and it's not a, it's not a matter of being competitive. It's a matter of about learning and being inquisitive. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, you know, Aaron does something and it inspires me to do it. You know, uh, 
Uh, so yeah, I may I may give it a shot. I'll. The thing is, is I, I get distracted with my own art, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should. I should. Uh, how many hours uh, do you draw in a week, Manny? <laughs> oh my God! How many hours don't I draw in a week? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to just guess. So I draw all day, let's just say, oh my God. Draw for myself or draw for work? Because I never count. I used to complain when I was an animator, and I don't know if you did this, Aaron. Uh, you know, you're working on, let's just, you know, I was working on, you know, let's just say Prince of Egypt. And yeah. I, uh, I'm like, work on it all week, and we're drawing all week, we're working on it. But then you get home, I was like, I haven't drawn all week. Yeah. You know, and I think it just meant I didn't draw at home with my own stuff. Exactly. So, so I don't count work stuff as work as uh, as uh, work. So. Uh, yeah, because a lot of times it's not what you would choose to draw anyway. Yeah, yeah. In a week or in a day? I can't remember. That's what they just asked. In a day. Dustin. Uh, yeah. In a week. Uh, in a week. You know. Oh man. A lot. <laughs> in, a, uh, in a week, let's just say four hours a day drawing, three, four, four hours average. Does that make sense, Aaron? Is that about what you do? Uh, it, it depends, yeah. Sometimes it's three or four hours. Sometimes I don't draw for two days. You know, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it's all day. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, oh my God. It's kind of like the, the mood let's of just, the week. Let's just average. I'm going to say average three to three hours a day, let's just say, not counting work. Uh, even though that's you know I draw at work too, but my own stuff let's just say three, you know three times whatever. So I hate like, when I don't draw though. It's around like twenty one ish hours in a week. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Uh, okay. Let's see here. To both of you, I gotta I gotta bring this up. Here we go. Uh, I work on illustrations for children's books. How would you how would you balance the often violent nature of wild animals as subjects with the innocence of this demographic audience doing children's books? I am, um, you know, it's funny. I for me, if I'm doing, I don't really. If I'm doing something for a younger audience, I'm not usually talking about the brutality of nature. So. It's usually something like The Lion King or something like that, that I'm, uh, that type of story that I'm telling. You know, the, uh, um, you know, one of the most feared predators on the planet is the polar bear. But I'm doing a little story called Snow Bear, and it's, it's the sweetest little polar bear you ever met. <laughs> but if you meet a real polar bear in the wild, he's going to eat you. So uh, to me, it's just keeping, keeping being aware of who my demographic is. And the tone of the story I'm trying to tell. Uh, this is this question is to the both of you. Uh, any airlines or travel agencies or uh, tour guides that you guys recommend based on your trips? Uh, do you organize everything on your own and travel alone, or do you have some kind of help with that? What, what was the question? You cut out for a little bit. It's do we have any tour guides or travel agencies that we recommend, or do we handle it all ourselves as far as our our uh, our itineraries and all that? Uh, we handle all of our itineraries on our own. Yeah, Nick I would does, say that. I Nick say does that. a lot of it. Well, Nick does all of it. <laughs> Nick, 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 Perch. Nick to the thing. Yeah, Chris is the latest of the thing. Yeah. Uh, no, where to go? Usually, if I go, like, if I'm going to Mongolia, uh, I have friends in Mongolia, and they'll end up steering me in the in the right direction. Yeah, like our last trip to Africa, uh, Christy took care of pretty much Christy and John, right? They yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, they were just contacting us. Okay, you need to send this in, send this in, and you know we do we handle it that way um you know nick and i did a month a month trip in europe and nick handled all the booking for all of that so it's and when we do our our western trips that's just a lot of times we're just 
impaling it by the seat of our pants. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, Manny, but, what was your job on uh, Prince of Egypt? Uh, let's see. I worked on. Uh, <laughs> I just remember assisting on the. Uh, the thing that comes to my head the the, the, the most is that freaking chariot race. Oh, yeah. The horses oh, yeah. on that chariot race. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you start off uh, assisting animating. Uh, a deadline comes. Everybody's cleaning up. Everybody. Um, I can't because that scene was still seen with the. Uh, those horses. Uh, I never got to work on Moses or Ramses or anything. I just seemed to always get stuck on the on those chariot races. <laughs> so I did a lot of work on those chariot races. I keep saying my internet's unstable. You keep popping in and out. But we did hear chariot races. So did you animate the uh, the horses in the, uh, on the chariots? I think I assisted on some of those. Most of those. Gotcha. I can't, it was a. It was a. I, I can't remember if he was an Italian guy or a, or a or a um, or a French guy that did the, most of the work. I did assistant work, and then <laughs> when the deadline was coming around, uh, you know, I jumped on, on on key cleanup, and then I ended up cleaning up, and then that's when I ended up doing some stuff on uh, on uh, the other characters. Is like during the when everybody's just cleaning up for yeah. the end. Yeah. Oh, he should be underneath. Uh, to either of you, have you drawn a self-portrait? If so, what was unusually distinctive about the drawing of yourself? Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Answer, Aaron. I have an answer already, but... My nose. <laughs> <laughs> so... Go ahead. I'll share my... I'll, I will share my... Uh, at some point, I'll share mine. Uh, I taught at a... I taught concept art at a school called... Uh, Gemini School of Art in uh, Austin, and it was a private school. And one of the things that uh, the professor had people do there is, I think, if I remember, I was like self-portrait, and I had to do a, a self-portrait for a um, for an intro. I didn't want to do a, uh, a photograph, so I I actually it was it was for a uh, for a, a publication. I got included in a. Uh, this is kind of an honor. Uh, there's such thing as a as a falconry bible for North America, uh -huh. and they feature they feature um, different falconers that have meant stuff or have, uh, and and I I I was featured in it, and I painted myself for that, and that was really weird. Someone else like is studying. drawing in here. So, sorry, sorry to cut you yeah, off. You what? Someone else is drawing in here. Yeah, I see that OPS showing up. I don't know who that is. Like that one right there? Yeah. Yeah. I just blocked them. Sorry, person, but no, you're not invited. <laughs> not this time around. Go ahead, Manny. I wonder, I wonder how that was. I thought it was I thought it was Dustin. Uh, I I have no access to it right now. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, let me do this. Is it set to public? Let me just see the URL. Well, I just have to, I will just have to live with it. <laughs> Stop it! Uh, Manny, do you ever sell any of your artwork? Would love to own a piece. Uh, you cut out for a bit. Is that for me, Aaron? Uh, this is for you, Manny. Do you sell any of your artwork? Uh, yes, I do. Um, not very much, but yeah, I, I do. Uh, people bug me enough, I will. Uh, I just don't have a store or a storefront. I usually send them to Christy. Um, she's the, she's, I mean, <laughs> or Christy, she still sort of manages me. But uh, um, yeah, I do. It, it all depends on what it is. You know, I know, I know people on Instagram, I'm, al I'm always selling uh, stuff there. And they'll, they'll hit me up on there, whether it's a UFC fighter, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, Doc Holiday or Wyatt Earp that I drew. So uh, uh, just just hit me up and and I'll see if I have whatever they want. I love those uh, tombstone illustrations you did. <laughs> yeah, those those always get sold, man. 
<laughs> so weird. Who's drawing the zebra? <laughs> Who's drawing the zebra? Yeah, is that you? Aaron Blaze. That zebra is Aaron Blaze. Aaron Blaze. Aaron Blaze. I'm trying to yeah. just draw him quickly and getting messy with the with the fur fur. So, so Dad is drawing on the left hand side while Manny is drawing on the right hand side. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. See, I'm getting looser and looser. And uh. And for Mandy, what is your drive? What is your motivation? I lost you for a bit. Yeah, it's, it's, we're going in and out. And it keeps telling us we got an unstable connection. What's your What's your motivation? Okay. What's your drive? Uh, what's my motivation for what? What's your motivation? What's just, your drive? Just for draw for drawing for for your art, any of that. Uh, my motivation. Well, my motivation is to hopefully educate people. Um, is to better myself and become a, a better artist. I'm never satisfied with anything that I do. Uh, but nowadays, for me, and I think Aaron as well, I mean, he's teaching. He's, I consider Aaron a, an amazing art teacher. Uh, same thing with me, whether I'm teaching. Uh, I need to do more, more stuff like Aaron in my approach, but uh, also educating people on, uh, on our planet and, and, and on the animals and and what's going on and how we can help and etc so uh probably learning and edu education <laughs> learning for myself and then educating others that makes sense what's going on what's going on and that is all i got and that is all she wrote YouTube question for both Aaron and Manu. Did you guys ever experience imposter syndrome on your first days in the studios? I still experience imposter syndrome. I figured What's impossible? imposter is syndrome is you really don't, you, you think that you really don't know how to draw and that you're just an imposter and everyone's going to figure it out eventually. <laughs> yeah. That's me. I remember as a as a supervising and as a director, I really went through. It's like, nope, no, nope, they're all they're all gonna know I'm a sham. No, nope, they're gonna figure it out. But oh, man, I still go through. It. I think I think it's just young insecurity, right? Am I right? Oh yeah. Like nowadays, I don't uh, I don't care as much anymore. I guess exactly. Not that, you know, you're trying to impress people at that age. I, think. I don't know. Yeah, no, it, that's a good that's a good way of putting it. I just don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Let's do a blue sky behind them. Blue cerulean. There we go. A nice cerulean sky. Let's knock that opacity up to one hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Ooh, that's blue. Tell us a drawing from your early days that makes you laugh today. Uh, see, I don't. I can't remember drawings. I've drawn. I've done th hundreds of tens of hundreds of thousands of drawings. I can't remember any of my early. I don't know. I've done. 100,000 drawings in the last year, probably. I, um, so remember I don't know if it makes me laugh. It embarrasses me, but we were at a workshop one time, and it was me and a guy named Thierry Duazon, who's an amazing, amazing concept artist. And uh, we went on. We did this fundraiser at, at Noman, and um, <laughs> I started the creature, the creature design, and I started it, and I was like, oh, my God, okay, here we go. And, and then Thierry took it over, and... You know, it just, I didn't know where it was going. It was like not very good. <laughs> and our, our saving grace was Terrell Whitlatch sitting down afterwards, and and poor Terrell having to make something of it. And she just <laughs> saved our rear ends, man. She's she like, it. she made the creature work, and then she made us proud that we helped draw that. You know, but <laughs> but yeah, at the time I was like, oh my god, is this a camel? Is this a, what is this? You know? Yeah. And then she we sat down and. 
And Tara Witt latched it. That's awesome. Yeah. Old Terrell. She's awesome. She got a mouth like a sailor. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't know Tara Witt, like, she's the sweetest, most mild mannered lady you've ever met. She's just an oh yeah, incredible. She, she, I, 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 we we all in love with her. She's so amazing. And she's an incredible. Yeah. Her and uh, like I'm determined to take her and Ian McKay with us to. Uh, Lost him again. He's going in now. Are you back? Yeah. Uh, I'm here. Yeah, Where you do you want to take Tarot again? He cut out. He can't hear you. Say it again. Don't say it again, yeah. Dustin. Okay, uh, I'll try again. I said, uh, you guys, can you, can you hear me? Can yeah, hear you can now. Hear okay. And I said, I, I really want to take Tarot and Ian McKegg with us to uh, Africa next time. Oh, yeah. Uh, Really wanting to to make that happen. Uh, my I um I went on a I almost went on a trip to uh, Sumatra, or Borneo, and uh, I almost took uh, Ian with me on that trip. Oh, but man. it, it fell awesome. through. It didn't it didn't, it didn't happen. So. Let's turn these off. Another one. What are we doing on time? Three o'clock. Oh, we're good. Yeah. How are you doing on time? Uh, Me? Yeah. I'm good, man. I, I, I Aaron. Man. We talked about this that we should just like what is, just some, once in a while just get on and sketch. Yes. Because because uh, it's so much fun, man. It really is. I love doing this stuff. Uh, yeah, and you know it, 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 it's yeah it's, it's fun hanging out. I can't wait to hang out again. I miss, I miss it, and I'm sure around the corner so yeah are you, I need gonna, to go. are you gonna make your way down here i was about to say that yep i need to i need to go out there <laughs> the flow rider flow rider flow rider i'm gonna draw i'll draw a little a lioness with you Oops. There we go. Sometimes it draws broad. How do you take the uh, the pressure sensitivity off? Do you know? Uh, I I don't think you can. So uh, it's just oh, something you... that you sort of have to deal with. I okay. treat it uh, a lot like uh, like a marker because uh, once you put something down there, and if you're going to go over it again, it's going to get a little darker. So no, I don't just... mind that. I'm just talking about like a, a tapered line or a thick line. You, oh yeah, I, I haven't played it enough. Do you know how to take off the taper part of it? Nope. Oh, okay. That was, that's yeah. what I was wondering. I'm all out of questions. Yeah, we're out of questions on this end too, so we'll just keep on drawing. Hey, Manny. Raider, uh, with the camera, how are you liking going from uh, crop to full frame? Oh, it's a, it's a big difference, man. But I do have to say that the uh, video, I guess it's because the A9 doesn't do S-Log, right? Uh, and, right, uh, yeah. Yeah, that and the A6500 does. So I'm using the A6500 for video. And... Uh, but no, it's a, it's a big difference, man. I'll send you some of the pictures that I got in Yellowstone. Definitely. Yeah. And I've been shooting stuff uh, for a uh, product. Like yesterday, I had a photo shoot with a motorcycle. Oh, really? Yeah. And that was really cool to shoot at a really low, uh, to make everything look blurred, and then the, the, the motorcycle be really in uh, uh, focus. Oh yeah, trying to find that right shutter shutter balance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm shooting in manual, so. Oh yeah, that's why I do. I always shoot manual. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, it, it it took a little bit of time to just get used to the uh, uh, the setup. Do you have an extended battery on yours? Yeah, I had the extended battery grip. Okay. Yep. Yeah, uh, 
I mean, yeah, I never Kate really had a problem with the, with the battery battery life, but having the battery grip just gives gives you a much better feel, much better grip with it. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I got a, um, uh, what do you call it, a um, an extra battery. I had to buy an extra battery. So. Uh, and then I took some moose shot. I took some really amazing moose shots in uh, up in Jackson. When I went out there, there was a moose walk around. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, Wyoming. Yeah, I can't wait to go back out, out there with, with my camera gear now. For the first thing I do when I go to Jackson is I take a picture of that old cowboy bar and send it to that old boy here in Blaze. Any deeper, you'll sound like Sam Smith. Yeah, you had to talk about the uh, it, it's, Bobcat and the Blue Corn. Uh, what is your guys' kind of favorite food. joke? Favorite joke? Favorite joke? Uh, favorite joke? I don't know. I could, uh, if I can't tell it. This is a family show. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me those things. It's a family show. Uh, do you both have Wacom? Yes, we're both yes. working on a Wacom. Yeah. Both of us. Both. Okay. In fact, here is a set cam of dad's current setup which is a 32 inch Wacom and Manny which one are you you using uh probably the same thing Aaron is 32 yeah I think so yeah beauty 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 it's great even though I'd like uh uh and I don't know if you if you tried it, Aaron, the, the portal ones to take with you, the little one. Well, I've got a 16. I, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, Just, I've got this. Do, what's the one that, that's its own computer, Dustin? Oh, the Wacom Pro, uh, Cintiq Pro? No. Or the portable? Yeah, but it's mobile. its own. Art Mobile? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there goes the internet connection again. You can tell me we're unstable. We're good. I know I'm unstable. We're good. Come on. Yeah, Mobile Studio Pro. Mobile Studio Studio Pro. Yeah, we've got one of those. Okay. And uh, even have the older version that was that used to be called the SNT Companion, I think, back yeah. then. It was one of the older models. Um, but other than that, you you had quite quite a few Cintiqs. Oh, I've had. I think I've had every model. This is our business, so we go through a lot of Cintiqs, try different, different, uh, well, different ones. How much did that set you back? <laughs> Were these? Me? Well, they're not cheap, that's for sure. But I use it every day, and so for me, it's you know, it's like if you're gonna, if you're a, a you know, if you cut lawns for a business for a bit of living, you're gonna go out and buy a two thousand dollar riding lawnmower because it's gonna help you get those lawns cut faster. So if you know, for me, if I'm going to be doing digital art. I'm going to go out and buy a twenty-five hundred dollars Cintiq because it's going to help me get my art done quicker, more efficiently. Uh, to the both of you, what are your favorite medium? What is your favorite medium to draw? I like to. Uh, <laughs> I always get made fun of this, but uh, I love ballpoint pens. Um, ballpoint pens and watercolor, I think, uh, and, and brush pens. But a, a ball, if I had to pick, well, like, one thing to just draw with forever, like, I can only pick one thing, it'd probably be a ballpoint pen because I can, you know, I, the variations that it that it gives you is amazing just by pressure. So, yeah, I agree. And also, Manny, are there any other kinds of mediums that you like to use? I like acrylics as well. Uh, Greg Beecham's going to make fun of me, but because uh, he's all like, I don't paint with stinking plastic or whatever he says. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, I like it as a dry squick. I, 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 I'm not as patient as Greg where he sits and 
just does these amazing creations with oil. I uh, I want to move on. Yeah, you know, I mean, and, every uh, medium, every, definitely every medium has its has its advantages and disadvantages. And I agree with that. I mean, I I like I love oil. Watercolor is my favorite. Yeah, me too. And uh, but I love oil. And I love acrylic too. I mean, I love sitting down and painting in acrylic. And you know, every one you get something completely different. It's like painting in you know digitally. You just get something different every, no matter what you use. We all know that Aaron always wants a bigger, the big, the biggest Cintiq. But Manny, if they <laughs> announced a bigger Wacom, uh, would you would you get it if it, if it was available? A, a bigger Wacom. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm good with what I have. Um, probably not. Um, I like the fact that, you know, I, I, I had a, this, uh, computer that I could draw on the screen with and it was a little bit, it was, it was a bit small and it was hard for me to, I had to make it work cause I had deadlines, but, uh, I like the bigger one to work with cause it, it, it's very similar to like painting on an easel or something like use your entire shoulder, your entire arm, your wrist. Um, but no, if they offered a new one like tomorrow, uh, no, I wouldn't be jumping. It would have to have some pretty amazing bells and whistles for me to do that. And uh, yeah. I'd totally be on it. Yeah. <laughs> like being able to 3D print your own coffee? <laughs> oh, yeah. Then I'd get it. <laughs> Uh, do either of you do any 3D mediums, uh, like hand building or pottery? Yes. No. I've been getting into pottery. <laughs> you know what? It's funny. I've been watching this show on uh, on Hulu Plus called The Great Pottery Throwdown. It's a British pottery show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, man, I've never wanted to do pottery more in my life than now. I'm oh, that's funny. That show. One of my good friends, is uh, she does Anasazi pottery uh uh, like old style, like you find in the ruins, yeah. like using natural clay and everything. It's super intriguing. Uh, and I'm assuming they do like ground fires, right? For those. Yes, ground fires. fires. And uh, I'm actually probably going to be heading out after this uh, podcast or uh, the streaming. I'm running. There's like a conference thing going on, archaeological pottery or something, and I'm really intrigued. I'm going, and I may head that direction. Oh, so cool. getting a road trip and listen to some books on tape and 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 see what I, I learned. That's one of the things I love about you. How you just you hop in your in your car and you just at the drop of a hat and you think nothing about driving for ten hours to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> I put I just put a book on tape on and go. I've been uh, listening a lot to uh, historical stuff. I'm listening to. Uh, uh, I just finished a book called The Apache Wars about Geronimo and the Naichi and Cochise and all those. So, uh, I'm listening to one on Cochise right now. So, Cochise? Cochise. Cochise. Right on. And Goyatla, which is Geronimo's real name. Do you guys color pick from the canvas or do you guys eyeball the color picker? I eyeball the color picker. I eyeball. Um, I used to, uh, a lot, um, try to, uh, uh, use, you know, bring pictures in for, you know, for reference as far as the colors, but, uh, I just eyeball. Less and less I care about colors and more about, uh, tones. Yeah. Uh, Nick, yes, we did plug into the router. We actually plugged in last week. So I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's just my internet. It's just I know they've been because we had a tornado come through a few weeks ago, and uh, it's been a little funky ever since then. And I know they've been doing work on the big uh, tower nearby. On oh, the big tower. The big tower. Uh, Twitch comment. It's the slider below size in Magma Studio. If minimum size is set to max, then there is no size pressure setting. Wait, it's a what? Oh, okay. This is going back to the thing I was talking about before. Um, yeah. Size yeah. pressure. 
It's the slider below size. Oh, minimum size. There it is. Oh, I see. So if you if you minimum if the minimum size is set to max, then there's no size pressure. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thanks. Hey, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, eh? Hey, how's it going? Eh? Cheers from Brazil. Uh, hey. Can you tell us what Hello, is your though. Can you tell us what is your favorite movie character to draw? I don't have any favorite movie characters to draw. Um, I mean, I have favorite characters that I've created for, for like, I love drawing Nala. I love drawing the Beast. I didn't create the Beast, but I, I love drawing him. That's for sure. Uh, how about you, Manny? What is your favorite movie character to draw? Movie character, uh, you know, I'm right now. I'm, uh, I like drawing Western characters. Uh, as you know, I drawn Doc Holliday in what uh, in the White Earp quite a bit, uh, which is uh, Val Kilmer and Russell or, or Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell. I like drawing Clint Eastwood a lot. Oh yeah, spaghetti western stuff. But uh, I don't do it a lot. Um, but yeah, probably western. The old spaghetti western guy, and uh, I would probably that's what I'd probably select. See how this works, uh, Manny. Have you ever been to Antelope Island? Oh yeah, a lot. I uh, yeah, I have. <laughs> Where is that, by the way? I've, I've never. Heard uh, of I need to take you there next time. It's it's kind of it's not my favorite place uh, uh, because of the bugs during the time that they're out and but um, I photograph, photograph a lot of coyotes, porcupines, uh, antelope, of course, uh, mule deer. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a cool place. I, I wouldn't. I I don't go a lot, but yes, I I, I do go. Where is Antelope Island? Is it in? Uh, it's here in. Uh, it's here near Salt Lake City. It's on the other side of the lake. Uh, you have to take this long road to go into it. It's kind of neat. Gotcha. Um, maybe if you guys come next time with time, I'll, I'll, I'll take you guys out there so you guys say you've been there. Just real quick, I want to throw another plug out for Bobby Chu and um, uh, yeah. the studio that we're using. So um, for those of you that don't know. We are using Magma Studio, which is this great app that enables us to work together uh, that's been put out by Bobby Chu from uh, Schoolism. And uh, it's really, really cool. We've been having a great time with it. And uh, so check it out if you get a chance. Did you draw that little pig at the very bottom, Eric? No, that was the other person. Someone got in there. Oh, okay. I added the eyes. That was so some funny. People are <laughs> some people were wondering if that was Uncle Travis. No, I don't know who's doing it. <laughs> Somebody snuck in. My hat's off to you. You figured yeah, it out. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> At least they're not doing anything too bad. I know. <laughs> Are either of you using photo references? I am, yes. Uh, yeah, I am. I am. But uh, uh, what's nice for me is to use a, a picture and then turn it a bit. Yeah. So I'm just using it for placement. Yeah, and I, I'll throw in my own lighting and... And uh, these, and the reference photos that you guys are using, are they from... Um... From our Africa trip. From your Africa trip? Yep, mine are. Yep, yep. Yep. And there's one back in uh, Let me show you. I'll show you what I'm using real quick. That way you can see it. You can see here. I'm blowing it up. So it's just a quick little thing there. So I just used that as a, as a quick reference. and that was, uh, that was a female... I was kind of sitting off to, off to the side while all the other, all the other little warthog or not warthogs, but other lions were eating, eating the warthog.
Nick is asking, are we bringing Manny with us when we go see the gorillas? Hell no, we're not bringing Manny with us. <laughs> I'm bringing you guys. I'm bringing you guys. <laughs> I would love to bring Manny. <laughs> Take me with you. <laughs> Um, YouTube, YouTube comment. This is for Manu. I love your hat. Big heart. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> I bought this thing in Bozeman, Wyoming. For a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks. <laughs> and I, to this day, I still wear the hat that you, that you gave, gave us, Manny. The, uh, oh, yeah, good, the man. I, I see that. Yeah. I see that. That's cool, man. You know, the, the hundred bucks thing, and I've had people actually comment to me about that. <laughs> wondering, you know, what's the inside joke to that? And Aaron and I, and Nick stopped at a at a taxidermy shop in Afton, Wyoming, and uh, the we, were look, we were trying to see what they had there, and we stopped, and we ended up buying some mountain lion uh, right skulls here. that they had. Right here. There's a mountain yeah. skull right there that we bought while we were there. I don't know. I don't know. Did, did I ever show you how I mounted mine, Aaron? No, you what? Yeah, mine is... There it is. Let me turn this off so you guys can see it, but look at this. So it's, I, I drilled a hole in the side of my, uh, of my uh, oh, desk wow. here. Oh, you put this it on the display. display. Look at this. It's a, it's a posable uh, thing that I... That's super cool. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. But this is actually my, uh, this is from Bone Clones, my, my, my real one is up there, and, uh, anyway, uh, we stopped there, and we paid a hundred, everything was a hundred bucks. A <laughs> hundred bucks, yeah, hundred bucks. Yeah. So we ended up with a, a pronghorn antelope, uh, mount, head mount <laughs> in the back seat, and he just kept staring at me the whole time for a hundred bucks. <laughs> And this is what a, I got this one too, Aaron. Look at this. Wow. So this is a, this is is a, a grizzly, grizzly black bear. I can't see. It's a grizzly. I don't it's know. A grizzly. Oh, yeah. Look at the size. Of course, it's Holy a grizzly. Holy moly. Yeah, yeah. This guy was shot by the parks, I think, because of, he was being a bad boy. Oh, is he a. Uh, so it's cracked there, you can see, but there's his bullet entrance. He was probably a, a nuisance uh, bear. Pro problem bear. Oh, that's too bad. Aaron Blaze Bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is that instead of uh, giving that a bullet, we give him coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that's the. He comes right deal. down. <laughs> well, what are we coming up on? 3 320. <laughs> Do you have any advice for an aspiring illustrator or artist other than practice? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do, you know, the one thing that people really kind of disregard, don't think about, is think about business. You know, you have some business knowledge, understand how to market yourself. That's a big part of making this your living. You can't just get out there and just draw and hope that people are going to pay you what you're worth because it's not going to happen. So understanding business and, and uh, you know utilizing that as much as you can is very important. How about you, uh, Manny? Same thing. Uh, uh, it, it's a shame that they don't show that a little more because uh, it would have helped a lot a lot of people out a yeah. bit more. And hey. I was, uh, Lucky enough to have uh, Christy in my life to help me with all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Aaron, have you seen the Brother Bear recap video? <laughs> I have. I actually commented on it. <laughs> and it got real popular real quick. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. People are like, oh my god, the director commented. <laughs> I loved it. I liked it better than the movie. That's what I, that's what I put down. <laughs> Get the whole movie in about ten seconds. Does many like drawing animal mix-ups or animal caricatures similar to some of Aaron's streams? 
the, the cartoony stuff. Yeah, like the um, the recommendation stuff that we, uh, the where we let people recommend what we what Dad does, like uh, Mafia Llama or <laughs> oh yeah 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 or Vikings. yeah those are fun those are fun I haven't done that in a while but yeah that's uh, that's 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 so much fun yeah that's <laughs> fun if that's you know your kind of thing which which is not. <laughs> I mean, if you're into that. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just out of curiosity, what kind of courses did, uh, did both of you guys have in college? Well, Manny's self-taught. You, you didn't go to college. Yeah, I didn't go to. I didn't yeah. go to college. I went to school to be an illustrator, so I was. I took a lot of figure drawing classes, painting classes, uh, illustration, design, those types of things. And you learned to animate in Disney, right? When, when you yeah, I did learn. Yeah, I, I did learn to animate in in college. I learned. Uh, Glenn Keane taught me how to animate. Do either of you uh, repeat artwork in multiple mediums to get a perfect fit? No, I don't. I <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> if I once I do it, once I do it. Then I'm done. Let's see. Oh, Pat's I, I have a hard time bringing myself to do the same subject more than once. Yeah, it's kind of like once you once you finish the progression, you just don't want to do it all over again. <laughs> right. root beers in the world. <laughs> oh, that, that reminds me of... Um, Remember when you and I, when I took you to Wyoming when you were 13? Yep. And we did the We the did the hike. hike. That's what exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, we did the hike up we, the mountain, then we came back and had pizza. Pizza and root beer. Yep. <laughs> that sounds good right now. Yeah. Oh, man, that, that pizza place was amazing. We, we went way up uh, above Jenny Lake. Way up onto the mountain there, right up above tree line, actually. By the time we got back, we were exhausted. And, uh, we went down into the entrance of Moose right there. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And we went to that pizza joint that's in there. Yeah, yeah. Ordered a pizza and sat back. And then after that, we went, we were staying at the uh, at the Jackson Lake Lodge. Yeah. We went there and hung out, played Go Fish, and then went to bed. Yep. <laughs> Dustin so sat in the tub. <laughs> yeah, it was it was one of those that had the uh, open open screen doors. You could uh, yeah, in the bath from the bath to the bedroom or to the beds. And so Dad sat on the bed while I was in the tub and we were playing go fish. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun trip. And we had a beautiful view of the Grand uh, Grand Tetons, like no no roads, no buildings in the way, no nothing, yeah. just nature. Yeah, it was nice. It was beautiful beautiful. place, man. It was one year after 9-11, that's when we went. We, we actually flew on 9-11, well, 9-12, it's 9-11 uh, 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 of 02, yeah. Yeah. That's in kindergarten cop, kindergarten cop impressions. It's not a tumor. <laughs> it's not a tumor at all. <laughs> <laughs> there is no bathroom. Well, Pinky has a fork now. Oh, he's had that fork. Oh, does he? Oh, yeah. Or had he? I, I added it. Oh, you added it. <laughs> yeah, I did. It you just, did? I just, it looked like one of those barbecue, those old 1950 barbecue ads. <laughs> oh, barbecue. That's why I put a uh, little handkerchief on it as well. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Turning on all my layers now. Let's see what happens. There. Yeah, good. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, mine just, yeah. There you go. Let's make a mess. A mess. Uh, would, you, would, would you be interested in extending your work, trying new things? And if so, how? 
extending our work, trying new things. Like maybe trying something that you haven't tried before. Like is there? Uh, I'm, always, I'm always like like the pottery thing. I'm I'm totally into doing the pottery. Yeah, I, same thing with me. I like uh, I like trying all kinds of different stuff. I mean, yeah, pottery's been new. Pottery's been new to me, and uh, I've just I, I, I did I did a sculpture of uh, here recently. This is playing playing around, but here this is a this is based on Silver Eye from National Geographic's uh, Beverly and Derek Jobert. She's that blind tiger. This is a bronze that I just finished. Oh wow, uh, man, that's so, nice. Can you bring that then, in closer? Uh, and then uh, here's a little uh, snow leopard study that I did. I oh, nice. That's totally snow leopard too. There you go. Beauty. That's super cool. So yeah, trying new stuff is always awesome, and I think sculpture helps. Uh, yeah, Nick was helps. just saying we need to start trying VR drawing. Ooh. And, and the animation. Yeah, <laughs> we definitely should try that. I'm missing, I'm missing something. Trying, I'm trying all my different, moving my layers around. You can move them around? Yeah, you can move your layers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, sure. oh, I, I, I'm sorry, not, not transform them. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. If you, I'm sure you can transform them. I resized them the other day. I can't remember how I did it. That's so funny that somebody got in. The little pig guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hi, Aaron. Is it a good idea to start with perspective lines on paper and add the subjects on afterwards so that you could check the perspective? Thanks. Yeah, I mean, there's you can do it any way you want. Absolutely. I I I like you know when I'm doing perspective I. If I if I want it to be perfect, then yeah, I put a I'll create a grid, and I'll follow that grid. Otherwise, I just eyeball it. <laughs> I do, I'm still laughing at the little pig at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought your elephant PDF and how to draw big cats, and I love it. Aaron's courses are great. My boyfriend recently gifted me a one year subscription, and it's everything I need. I highly recommend it. Well, there you go. Hey, folks, go out there and. Get some classes. <laughs> oh, these are fun. These are amazing, man. It was fun. That's a lot of fun to turn these guys on. Let's uh next time let's do uh let's do the like the, the Asia region. Yeah, man. Let's, Ooh, I love the that. animals of Nepal or that whole area. Yeah. It'd be fun. Well, we've come up on three thirty, so I think we'll go ahead and call it. But for yeah, those man. of you uh that are interested in Manny's stuff, pull up Manny's slide yeah. there, dust butt. Yeah. So we got if you want to follow him on YouTube, it's uh Manu Manu Art, Art Channel. Channel. Over on the on the YouTube. Yeah. And uh let me turn these off. I want to turn these off so we don't have any interference in the background. They don't turn off quite as easily. There. And I those drawing I love that hyena. Thank that, you, man. <laughs> and that forehead, that forehead on that cheetah is so cheetah. That's perfect. <laughs> now, cheetahs, and, cheetahs and mountain lions, man, they're, they're tough, aren't I they? I know. Just that, just that little head. We're, we're so used to those giant angles. Yeah. And, I tend to mix to a lot of cats up in my head, and so when I draw a big cat, it looks like a mix of all kinds of cats. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, But, yeah, cheetahs, cheetahs and, uh, and mountain lions are uh, the toughest ones, I think get those those right proportions yeah so well when we're done um i'm gonna go through and do a bunch of freeze frames of uh our stills of of all the different layers so we can, we can no it's cool them. man sounds good yeah. yeah go through yours and do it with yours and i'll go through mine and do it with ours and we'll do a post together yeah cool and see where that little pig 
I couldn't find the player. Right. That's so funny. <laughs> hey, little guy. <laughs> well, congratulations. But uh, I want to remind you guys, too, about uh, next Saturday, only eight days from today, or is it seven days from today? I guess it's eight days from No, it's eight days from today. Oh, yeah. It's right the second. The corner. Um, we are doing our live workshop, and you guys can join in. It's uh, We're getting pretty close to being sold out. We're topping out at 300. Um, if it's more than 300, I have a hard time answering everyone's questions, and I want to be able to do that. So we're going to be doing a, I'm, I'm going to be doing a six-hour workshop. Uh, on animal drawing. We're going to talk about some of the things I think about. We're going to talk about uh, uh, anatomy. We're going to talk about comparative anatomy is a big one that I love to talk about. Because we all have the same parts. We're just proportioned in different ways. And once you understand that, it really does help your, your animal drawing quite a bit. And we're also going to talk about drawing animals in motion. And uh, Nick and I are going to pull up some of the footage that we actually shot with Manu in uh, Africa last year. And uh, we're actually going to do some drawing with you guys. You guys can join in. We're going to draw and we're going to play those videos back and we'll just draw as the videos play. So we've got stuff of hyenas and uh, giraffe and lions and all kinds of great stuff. So we look forward to that. Zebras. And uh, uh, But other than that, make sure you go over and, and give Manu some some love on social media. Yeah, follow me. Yeah, I got some uh, what I call Manu walkabouts. I'm always out and about. Oh, those I love. I love when you get a new one. Because usually I'll see it, it's like a Sunday morning and I'm still in bed. And I'll watch men who's walkabout and it's just super <laughs> Good, man. I was, gonna, I was going to uh, premiere one on today, but I just couldn't get to it. So next time that uh, we get together, Aaron, I'll... Uh, well, I'll yeah, I was going to say, if you, have, if you have one, when uh, if you come up with one, then let's, uh, yeah, let's we can hold it and we'll do, it, uh, we'll do another live stream like this and you can premiere it. Yeah, I just need to do a narration, and maybe uh, uh, we'll, we'll premiere it, and then we'll draw some. Uh, this one is on wild mustangs. Uh, oh, right next on. time you come out here, I'll take you out to the herd. We gotta, now, we is gotta that, take are they in Nevada or are they in Utah? Here in Utah. Oh yeah. wow! They're about an hour, uh, about an hour and a half away from me in the desert. It's what's called the West Desert. Okay. And it's it's you'll see those characters. I mean, all those mustangs have such different characterizations. Uh, they got the dreadlocks, they got the bikes, they got the yeah, scars, like man. all different characters, man. So it'll They're be cool. fun to go out there. I think we should go out there, photograph them, and then come come back to, to my place and then we'll draw some of those guys. Oh, that'd be awesome. I would love to do that. So, But they, anyway. they, they lend themselves to uh, to the way you uh, characterize your, like, uh, your, your, like, like you're saying, like the mobster hyena or whatever. Yeah. Those guys uh, just, just, you can pick four different of those Mustangs. And all four of them would be like completely different personalities. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Well, thanks you guys for hanging out with us for the last two hours. Sorry we were late. Uh, we'll have the sound fixed at some point. <laughs> it's just been a, a, this a, a, this albatross around our neck trying to get this sound working right. It's we haven't been able to crack the code, but we will. And uh, but we uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly did. I always love getting yeah, on and, and talking about on the road stories and animal stories and all that. Great, I had a great time. Thank you for ha helping me having me, Aaron. Uh, yeah, let's do this again soon, man. Oh, for those of you that don't know, that's a bison skull on the wall back there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, big yeah. old big old guy. And then I got my Maasai. Uh, oh yeah, thing, what's that thing called? I can't remember. I've got mine right here. Uh, oh shoot, where did I put it? I've got it over here. My Maasai spear yeah, the is, in the, is in the den back there. And I had the Maasai sword yeah. at home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nick is... Oh yeah, sorry. I, I thought I had something that I had to post, but I didn't. So yeah, anyway, um, thank you guys very much for hanging out with us. Uh, it was great. Um, we'll be doing more of this. We're gonna be bringing on uh, next week uh, we've got Ronnie Wilford coming on, and uh, we're going to do a live stream together. Uh, he's got a brand new introduction to drawing course that's going to be coming out, and uh, we're really excited about that. So make sure you guys tune in next Friday because we're going to have Ronnie. If you guys know, for those of you that don't know Ronnie, Ronnie and I worked together at Disney for years. Ronnie's an amazing painter, uh, artist, and uh, he's just completed a brand new course on an introduction to drawing. He's already got one on... Uh, an introduction to color on our on our site, and also uh, painting outdoors, uh, plein air painting. So 
Uh, and actually, it's Ronnie and I that taught the course, uh, taught our live classes, uh, both in England and in Sarasota. So um, we've done a lot of stuff together. So make sure you tune in next week for that. And uh, otherwise, we'll keep in touch with Manny. Manny, you keep in touch with us. We'll get you on again. And uh, actually, you. Manny's going to be doing a course for us also. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be premature in, in uh, telling everybody, but I'm going to put uh, Manny. Funny, man. I'm going to put the pressure on Manny. Manny's doing a course on uh, sketchbooks, doing uh, keeping a sketchbook and uh, and yeah. sketching on location, and doing a whole course on it. And uh, we're really excited about um, that. So now, now you have to do it, Manny. No, it's good. I've been, I've been thinking about it. We thought, we talked about it. So it's not worries. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> all right. I okay. hope you guys have a great week. Like I always say, put some beauty back into the world. That's what we do as artists. And uh, be good. And uh, be kind to somebody. Make it a great week. Make somebody else's life better. And I will talk to you next week. Thanks. Adios. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And if any of you guys are interested in any wildlife photography, uh, you can check out my Instagram over at Dustin underscore Blaze. And I post uh, new stuff over there quite a bit. And also, you can check out my photo reference bundle on CreatureArtTeacher.com of all Florida, of all different sorts of Florida wildlife. So you can go over there, check that stuff out. We'll see you guys next time. And as always, Cowboy Bebop. See ya.